Hey, does this sound too good to be true? You can literally triple your productivity as a content creator by using a teleprompter. I am not making it up. In fact, I'm probably being a little conservative with that number because shoots that used to take me two hours now take me maybe 30 minutes, all because I started using a teleprompter and it even makes editing go faster. So there's even more time savings. If you're making videos and don't have a lot of time, you'd be crazy not to use a teleprompter. Hey, it's Matt Haynes and welcome. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, my only goal here is to help content creators like you get better with your technical and production knowledge so your channel can get better too. So, I mean, why isn't everyone using a teleprompter then? That's because there are some real downsides. And if you don't know how to deal with some of these common problems, you might give up too early. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use a teleprompter and ways to avoid the problems new users often experience. And later I'm gonna tell you about one tool I started using that almost guarantees your performance will sound natural every single time. And that's the biggest problem that people have with teleprompters. If you don't use them correctly, you run the risk of sounding flat and lifeless and nobody wants to watch a lifeless content creator. And that was my first experience, unfortunately. I, I found this teleprompter app called, well, teleprompter from a company called, wait for it, Teleprompter Apps Limited. Yes, never mind the boring name. They actually make some great apps that allow you to have text displayed on your phone screen while you also record yourself in selfie mode. And you don't need any hardware to use them, just your phone. The problem was I wasn't using it right. And as a result, the first videos I made with a teleprompter came out really horrible. And since I don't use my phone for making content very much anyway, I just gave up on the idea. But after hearing different YouTubers talk about how productive they were when they used the teleprompter, I decided I'd take the plunge and buy an actual hardware teleprompter. So I set it up, I practiced with it for a little while, and then recorded my very first video using my brand new gear. And you know what? It turned out pretty bad. I, I did post it to my channel though, and I haven't removed it yet, but... I probably should. One of the problems with teleprompters is that they do take a little practice and that's kind of a dirty word for many content creators. Between the need for instant gratification and the lack of time, many creators won't even consider a teleprompter because they won't see immediate improvement. And if you don't learn to use a teleprompter correctly, you won't ever see an improvement. If you're making video content of any sort, you should probably be using a script, whether or not you're using a teleprompter. And I started out not using a script. I would just start recording with a vague concept in mind and I would just kind of ramble on and sometimes I'd have some bullet points written down, but basically I was just winging it. And this made editing a nightmare. It is really hard to make a good video if you're just rambling on. It sometimes took me like days to put together even just a, a rough edit. Then I started writing scripts for my videos. And at first I wasn't reading them word for word. What I would do is I would put the script on my laptop and I'd have it right next to me. And I would just read a few sentences at a time and then just sort of ad lib it to the camera. And by the way, that's not what I'm doing right now. I'm actually have a, a digital audio workstation recording the audio for this really nice microphone, but I digress. And so, you know, I would be ad-libbing it. And I'd just kind of be going back and forth, back and forth like that. And maybe a few sentences at a time. And this did make editing go a lot faster. And it also made my content better, but it still took forever. I'd have to do like five or 10 takes for every little chunk of script. So you really do need a script. I mean, you can't plan your hook and your ending and the overall flow of your video if you don't write it down, teleprompter or not. But when you're writing a script for a teleprompter, you have to be really careful to write the script in your own kind of authentic speaking voice. When I was ad-libbing from the script on my laptop and kind of going back and forth, my performance would sound just like me because I mean, it was me, right? But the problem with reading a script word for word is that I mean, I write like a college student and I talk like a middle school student and I needed my scripts to sound more like a middle school student. So as a result, I do spend more time on my scripts now and that does take back a little bit of the time savings, but overall it is still totally worth it. All right, so here's a tip for writing scripts and I guess it's probably a couple of tips, but you wanna write a rough draft and then just let it sit for a day or two so that it kinda, kinda stews or gels in your head and then go back and read it out loud and, and use all the emotion that you would use on camera. And it has to be out loud. You won't spot any of the stuffy parts or the weird parts if you just read it in your head. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. And you'll know right away what to change because it'll just sound funny. So make sure you add all of the unnecessary words you use in speech, but not in formal writing. Like, for example, I say now and so a lot in real life. So I add those to the script where it feels natural. And I get rid of like big words and anything that's hard to say, like accidental tongue twisters. And you're not going to find those tongue twisters unless you say it out loud. Okay, if you're using a hardware teleprompter in front of your camera, they're pretty easy to set up. I mean, there's a few pieces that you have to put together, but it's not really a big deal. And most teleprompters these days, they use like a phone or tablet to display the text and the screen of the tablet is reflected onto a sheet of special glass, and the special glass is angled towards you. And that glass is designed to let light into the lens coming from, you know, the you or the, the scene you're lighting, but it reflects the text off the tablet back in your direction. And so your teleprompter app will actually let you flip the text so it can uh, show up correctly in the reflection. Unfortunately, there's another problem that can make teleprompters disappointing to use, and that's the lack of eye contact. And I know that sounds kind of crazy because that's the whole point of this. You're looking at the camera as you read your script. The problem isn't so much with eye contact, it's with eye movement though. If you don't set things up correctly, your viewers could actually see your eyes moving as you read, and this could really ruin your video, which is probably another reason more people don't use teleprompters. Here's a couple of tips for reducing eye movement while you're reading. First, you gotta adjust the text so that it's kind of confined to the center of your device, or, well, actually, let me clarify. It needs to be closer to the lens. So if you're using a phone in selfie mode, you know, the camera's on one end of it, you actually want the text on your screen to be mostly towards the lens up on that one side of your phone. And if your teleprompter is actually in front of a camera, you want the text centered around the lens. If your text goes to the edge of the teleprompter screen, your eyes are just gonna kinda go back and forth, back and forth, and, and your viewer is gonna see that. Now the app you're using might default to filling the screen of your device, so check that and, and adjust the margins if you can. Also, you want your camera to be further away and you wanna use a longer lens. And this is gonna be a little bit of a shock to some of you because you're used to having your camera kinda right in your face, wide angle lens. But if you're really close to your camera, your teleprompter screen appears to be bigger to you. And as a result, your eyes are gonna move from side to side quite a bit more. But if you're further away, your eyes stay pretty much straight ahead. And I found this out the hard way when I switched teleprompters. I've been using a teleprompter that fits my iPad and I place it mm, about six feet away from me. And this has worked out really well. But then I bought a small, light teleprompter that I thought might be useful when I'm outdoors. And it's, it's pretty tiny, and it can only use a phone for its display. Now, the problem is, when I have it at a normal selfie distance like this, it means that I'm pretty close to the camera, and I'm also using a wide-angle lens. And I can totally see my eyes moving around, and it makes me look kind of shifty. Now I could make the text smaller and I could bring it in a little bit and that way my eyes won't move back and forth so much, but then I have to put my glasses on because I can't read the text and I'm, I'm still working out how to use this teleprompter. So for now, the sweet spot is to have a longer lens and be further away. Both of my hardware teleprompters are made by Ilakenzi. I think that's how you say it. And I bought them because they were cheap. They come with a remote and there's a free app you can download. And I don't know if it's the remote or the app that's at fault, but sometimes the app will just stop scrolling in the middle of a take, and other times it'll just start moving on its own, which is really disconcerting, and that has led to a lot of on-camera swearing, which I have later had to delete. And speaking of scrolling, the most common way to use a teleprompter is, unfortunately, to just let it automatically scroll at a set speed. And that's probably what you think of when you think of a teleprompter, because we've seen that in the movies and someone's doing a newscast and the text is scrolling along, keeping up with what the person's saying. And that is the traditional way of using a teleprompter. The text scrolls and the person reads, but this works because someone else is controlling the speed of the text scrolling by and they can adjust it or go back and forth if the pacing changes. This is a whole lot harder if you're a solo act and you don't want to have a clicker or something in your hand. So getting the speed of the scroll right is a challenge. And this is one of the major problems with using a teleprompter. If you're setting your text to scroll at a constant speed, it will never be exactly right. That's because you naturally speed up and slow down as you talk. If you've got your text scrolling in a set speed, you start to sound flat and dull. And it's because you're so focused on keeping up with the words that you 
you forget to feel the words you're saying. So what do you do about this? Well, I mean, there's a couple of things. First, you could hide the clicker somewhere. I don't know where. And when the scrolling speed starts to run away from you, and then you can just, you know, stop it with a clicker. And this probably means, though, that you're going to have to cut or edit there when you go to edit your video together. But those Illocancy remotes are not great about rewinding, and they make me have to click this little joystick for every single line of text, and it really, really takes a long time. And that's really, really frustrating, because if I just screwed up and I have to go back to the beginning of the entire section... Ugh. Fortunately, many teleprompter apps allow you to display text in chunks or pages instead of scrolling it at a set speed. This means you can talk at different speeds and you can even go off script because it's it's showing that page on your screen and just holding it. But it does mean that you need to click for each new page. So if you don't want a clicker in your hands as you talk, then that's a little bit of a problem. And one solution for that is actually to get a foot pedal. Yes, you heard me right, a foot pedal. They actually make page turner foot pedals and these are you usually see these being used by musicians who are reading sheet music from a tablet but you can use them on some teleprompter apps as well that way you can tap forward or back in your script a page at a time and no one will see you do it because you're doing it with your feet now these page turner pedals i mean they start around 50 dollars or so but range up to maybe 80 or 90 dollars a little bit more than that if i had to choose between scrolling and paging i would definitely go with paging Fortunately, I don't have to choose either one of those. And the reason is because I found this really awesome app that made the paging and the whole foot pedal thing completely unnecessary. But before I discuss that, I just want you to know, I've put some links to the apps and some of the gear I've been talking about down in the video notes. So this tool I was talking about earlier, it's an app called Prompt Smart Pro. By the way, this isn't sponsored by them. They didn't give me any free stuff. Nobody gave me any free stuff. Prompt Smart Pro wouldn't even respond to my emails. Are you out there, Prompt Smart Pro? Are you? The really cool thing about this app is that it has voice tracking technology. It will literally listen to you and scroll to the next part only when you've spoken the words in the script. This means you can slow down, you can pause, or you can even make stuff up and go completely off script. And this was a real game changer for me. Because here's the thing, it's really important that you be able to just pause while you're speaking. I mean, you should be able to speed up when you get excited about something. And it's also important that you can look away from the camera when it makes sense to do so. And then when you're back looking at your teleprompter, you don't freak out because you've lost your place. And it's also important that you could just like, I don't know, throw in a joke or ad lib when the mood strikes you, because these are all part of your authentic speaking voice. And I'm going to go off script right now. I just discovered this this evening literally, as I was getting ready for this, if you hook up a Bluetooth uh, keyboard to your 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 tablet or your phone, uh, Prompt Smart Pro, you can actually adjust up and down with the arrow keys. That was the one thing that was driving me nuts. If I messed up too badly, I'd have to like leap up from my chair and run around to the camera and with the iPad. And it was just, now I can just go tap, 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 tap. And I can just hide this discreetly because I don't need to tap it every time I need to move for a new page. So back on script. If you use a teleprompter and you combine it with proper script writing and either a clicker or maybe a foot pedal or even the Prompt Smart Pro app, this has the potential to really, really boost your productivity. And if you want to boost your productivity as a content creator even further, you need to watch this right now. 